Now for us to be able to configure our trust between company.pri and specialized.net, there's one prerequisite that actually has to happen. And that is ensuring that we have a proper name resolution between the domain controllers that exist here in company.pri and the domain controllers that exist here in specialized.net. Really, arguably, it's important for us to have name resolution for all the machines that exist between those two locations. If you think about, however, when we're talking about perhaps a mergers and acquisitions situation, it's a lot likely for the internal computers that exist inside company.pri to have access to the internal computers or, or name resolution to the internal computers that exist in Specialized.net. You think about your own environment. You probably don't have a DNS server that allows people out on the internet to resolve your internal desktops and laptops. No, that's generally a bad network security practice. And so for that reason, before the forest trust can actually be configured, we have to have some way to implement that name resolution. That can happen through one of two or so different mechanisms. The first of which is just simply to consolidate the name resolution for these two locations, for these two namespaces, onto a single environment. And that's kind of what I've done here in our demonstration environment. We have, in this environment, a machine, bighit.specialized.net, that currently serves as the DNS server for both Specialized.net and for company.pri. In a small environment, consolidating that, uh, that name resolution onto a small number of servers at the target the location is something that can probably be done. In a larger environment, however, you may have an extremely large and complicated DNS infrastructure. And so just merging these two into a single location is something that probably won't be an easy task. It may be a desired task, but it won't be something that's easy to do when you have to make that initial connection. And so there's a way involving DNS conditional forwarders that allows you to just simply reference the other DNS server when it comes time to resolve any machines that exist in that environment. I'll show you how both of these work here now. Let's take a look here at our domain. I'm going to go here to my machine. This is the mydesktop.company.pri. And what I want to do first is let me remote, I'm going to remote our server, bighit.specialized.net, which is at the 0.99 address. And I'm going to log in as specialized G Shields and my password here so that we can take a look at how DNS is configured currently on this remote server. Here I am on bighit.specialized.net. I'll click here so you can show that I'm indeed on this machine. And what I want to open up is the DNS server console here. So we can take a look at the fact that both of these zones are now present here on bighit.specialized.net. So all the machines in both of these two domains are currently configured to point to this server for their name resolution. Because of this, we now back on the other machine, I'm back here in my company.pri domain, can do an NS lookup on bighit.specialized, if I can spell, specialized.net, and get appropriate name resolution for that machine. Again, in many situations, being able to accomplish this in a large production environment is something that is probably not going to work because it's just a large activity to take all the different name re records that can exist in one domain and get them merged onto another domain's uh, DNS server. And so for that reason, a kind of interim step that can occur is the use of what is called a conditional forwarder. A conditional forwarder just simply says, machine, you are asking for a name resolution for a computer that exists in some other zone. Let's say that zone is specialized, specialized .net. Well, in order to access any of the name records for the machines in Specialized.net, you need to go to the machine at 192.168.0.99. A conditional forwarder is much like a forwarder, except as you can see, the term conditional here means that it, it actually does that forwarding based off of the, the DNS fully qualified domain name, or the, the domain name that exists in the request itself. Very handy for use when you're connecting these multiple domains together because it allows you to very quickly get uh, two different DNS servers connected together for the purposes of name resolution across multiple different zones. With name resolution now configured, with us being able to resolve from one zone to the other, the next step in the process is to actually create the forest trust. Creating that forest trust happens in Active Directory domains and uh, domains and trusts here. I'm going to launch here Active Directory Domains and Trusts, and it's from this location that we'll go about actually creating that forest trust. To create one, I'll right click here on um, company.pri and choose properties. And here's where we can see the trusts tab. 
Now, I told you before about the difference between trusted and trusting domains. You'll see kind of evidence here of domains trusted and domains that are trusting for this domain. That's kind of the vocabulary that we're seeing here. For us to be able to create a new trust, let's actually do, let's actually create a bi-directional trust to specialized.net because we want to have that transitive trust between all the different subdomains that may exist in both of these two uh, root domains be able to access each other. To do that, I'll uh, click the next button here and I'm going to connect to specialized.net. That's the remote domain I'm looking for because I'm currently in company.pri. Choose next again, and I'm going to create a forest trust as opposed to an external trust. This forest trust will be between the two root domains of those two forests. I'll choose next again and choose this to be a two-way trust as opposed to a one-way trust incoming and outgoing. I'll choose to create the trust between this domain and the other domain. Now back in the old days, you actually had to run this trust wizard in both locations, on this machine and over on that machine as well. This little screen here is actually pretty cool because from this single location, we can create both halves of our bi-directional trust without having to go backwards and forwards, to hop backwards and forwards between our two domain controllers. So let me create it in both this and the specified domain so I have both halves of the trust that are actually created. I'll punch in my username and password in the specialized.net domain, and I will choose forest-wide authentication. Forest-wide authentication essentially says that every single domain and subdomain in this now meshed together two forest configuration will be able to authenticate to each other. What's cool is if you do this and you want to be able to limit it to specific domains talking to other specific domains, you can do so by choosing selective authentication. There's additional steps that have to happen after this process to identify which domain should talk with which. But this gives you the ability to create what would otherwise have to be a mesh of external trusts through a single forest trust without all that extra messiness. We'll choose forest-wide authentication here to connect the two domains there at the very top. The same thing on the other side as well. Notice that this was uh, the uh, local forest and then over here being the target forest, the specified forest on the other side. When we're done, we hit next and that will go about creating the trust. If I skip past this screen for just a second, you'll see that our trust creation is complete. Uh, the relationship has been created successfully. And if we choose to confirm the trust, we can then further confirm the fact that yes, indeed, the trust is functioning appropriately. Notice here that specialized.net is now a, a domain that is trusted by this domain and a domain that trusts this domain. And if I pop over to my other server, bighit.specialized.net, and I take a look at Active Directory domains and trusts on this end and view the properties over here, you'll notice that company.pri is now in both of these locations as well. This little test is a good initial indication that indeed we do have a successful trust in both directions between both domains.